politics now. Delegate math, key part of the GOP race for the White House. With Randy Evans, a Republican National Committee member, recently saying Donald Trump may be able to get less than the 1,237 delegates and still win the nomination. What I do expect to happen is this, is that if Donald Trump exceeds 1,100 votes, he will become the nominee, even though he may not have 1,237. If he gets less than 1,000 delegates, then I think we're looking at a contested convention that could go on for many, many days. And Randy Evans joins me now. 1,100 is the magic number now? Randy, I thought it was 1,237. What would you mean by that? It is it is 1237, but what I said was is that I think if he gets to 1100, the bandwagon, the bandwagon effect will take over. People will be jumping on the Trump train, and he'll ride all the way to 1237. It's just part of the political process. People who have sat on the sidelines will suddenly decide he's close enough, they want to be on the winning team, and winning teams typically attract lots of delegates at the end, toward the end. <laughs> have, you heard, have you heard about the movement? Have you heard about the movement, though, uh, hashtag never Trump? I mean, there are yes, people who, who don't been, want him to get the nomination, just as many, you know, a lot of people do want him to get the nomination. I think that's right. But I think once you get that close to 80 to 90 percent of the de requisite delegates, I think after that, the momentum just takes over. And it's really hard to stop that kind of momentum when you get close to the convention. All right. So all these unbound delegates that Ted Cruz supposedly has had great organization throughout the states, going and trying to get them on his side on a second, third, fourth ballot. What do you mm -hmm. make of that organization versus Donald Trump just sort of getting into the game a little bit later on? You still think that if he has 1,100, he'll be able to sway those delegates? Yeah, I think so. I think the bandwagon effect is so dominant in politics where people really want access. They they're suddenly have an outsider. They're willing to be on the winning team. But I will say this, Ted Cruz has the most impressive ground operation I have ever seen. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of presidential campaigns. But as you heard from your Pennsylvania congressman, that's a great example. 54 unbound delegates right there in the state of Pennsylvania. Those are the kinds of delegates that at the end push uh, somebody who's really close right over the top. Okay. So it wasn't a trial balloon to put out 1,100 because, you know, the Rules Committee could make that change. No, they couldn't make that change. Only the convention itself could make that change. Really, the Standing Rules Committee now can only make recommendations to the full convention. Okay. The Convention Rules Committee can make recommendations to the full convention. But at the end of the day, it'll be the convention itself that adopts its own rules. All right. Some of those unbound delegates that we're talking about, that Cruz or Trump or Kasich for that matter, or maybe even Rubio is going to get back into it. Who knows? But they right. are the Rubio delegates. He has 172 Doing the math now, about 34 of those are going into the convention unbound. Did you ever think right. that we were going to be discussing the complexity of all of these delegates? Actually, I did. When we compressed the schedule, when we changed the rules to make it a much tighter process, and we started with 17 candidates, at that time I came out and I said I thought there was a one in three chance that we'd have a contested convention. I think now those odds are going up every day. Wow, very interesting. Okay, and to realign my numbers, Rubio is 171. <laughs> We're constantly number crunching here. 171 right. delegates that he has. All right, Randy Evans, great to speak with you. Thank you.